Can the Portuguese giants keep their star players and uh, remain with a positive financial structure? Hello everyone and welcome to the What If League. Today I'm doing part 2 of the experiment what would happen if the three Portuguese giants, Benfica, Sporting Club de Portugal and Porto uh, got uh, some of their star players back and um, then they remained at their old clubs. In the first part, uh, if you haven't seen that video, please uh, make sure to do so. It, it is in my channel, you can check out the videos uh, on my channel. Also, I will leave a link uh, to the video in the description below. So, in that first part, uh, I explained what happened. I transferred 12 players that, were, that used to play in Porto, Sporting or Benfica. And uh, we saw what happened in the first season with them back in Portugal. Sporting, uh, Sporting Club de Portugal were champions, uh, while uh, Benfica had a very disappointing performance in the Champions League, but they won the Portuguese Cup. While Porto had the best financial results, they had a positive outcome of the year, and uh, I think they are in the best situation for the next seasons. So now we're going to see what happens in the, in the second season. The date is already 2nd of June 2019. And uh, we are going to start with the Portuguese Primeira Liga. Here it is, the Portuguese Primeira Liga, where Porto are the new champions, which is not surprising to me. They have 83 points, 7 more than 2nd place Benfica, and uh, 9 more than Sporting Club de Portugal in 3rd position. Goal scorer of the league and best player of, uh, in, Port in Portugal is again Cristiano Ronaldo. This time he scored 20 goals. Angel Di Maria is in second place with uh, 14. And uh, Ronaldo's teammate Bas Dost is in third position with 13 goals. Now let's have a look at the teams uh, one by one and what happened there. So we start with the new champions Porto. Their key player is now Yasin Brahimi, which is, which is very, very impressive from him. With all, the key, with all the star players that are now in Porto, he is uh, again their key player. Let's look first of all in their transfers and uh, what happened this season. We can see that they sold some of their key players. Andre Silva went to Tottenham for £40 million. Ruben Neves was sold to Real Madrid for £49 million. Vincent Abubakar went to China for £17.5 million. Then who else we have? Uh, Jesus Corona was sold to Inter. Do we have any other big transfers? Yes, James Rodriguez uh, was transferred to Liverpool for 35 million pounds. So this is very uh, a very big transfer. Then we see a lot of players going on loan. Some smaller transfers here. Hector Herrera, of course, uh, was sold to Chivas. Not a small transfer. Otavio to Corinthians. And I think that's it. Now, if we look at the incoming transfers, they also uh, bought some players. Quite expensive players for a total of 46 million pounds. Jordan Osorio from Tondela, Nicolas Blandi from San Lorenzo, Santiago Garcia from Toluca, Gustavo Scarpa and Diogo Barbosa from Palmeiras, and uh, Paulinho from Vasco da Gama. So, a lot of transfers for them. Let's see their tactic screen, what's happening there. Their new transfer, Blandi, is uh, playing up top. Kasama is uh, in the number 10 position, and uh, all the other players, I think, are players that we are familiar with. Now let's see, let's see what happened in their schedule and how did they perform this season. So in the Champions League qualification rounds, they managed to eliminate Olympique Marseille with two wins. Then they also beat CSK Moscow in the final uh, in Champions Cup best placed playoff first leg and second leg. So you see in the first leg they won one nothing. then uh, that was away from home in Moscow, in Russia. And in the second leg at home, they drew 1-1, which was uh, enough for them to secure the spot in the Champions League. Their group uh, was consisted uh, by Standard Liège from Belgium, Juventus and Dortmund, Borussia Dortmund. They won in Germany 2-1 in their first game, only to lose at home to Juventus. Then they had a cup uh, game, which they won. And they, they lost in Belgium away, uh, away from home. Afterwards, uh, they managed to avenge against the Belgian team, winning 2-0 uh, at home. They, uh, eliminated, uh, they eliminated Benfica in the Portuguese Cup 4th round. Uh, afterwards, they also won against Dortmund at home, so quite impressive Champions League performance. They drew with Juventus away from home as well, so this is very, very interesting. And uh, that they qualified, I think, for the Champions League knockout rounds. 
in the cup competitions in the fourth round they eliminated uh, in the fifth round apologies they eliminated Avesh then the league cup began with a draw and uh, a win from them which uh, qualified them to continue uh, unfortunately for them in the uh, Tasa de Portugal sixth round they lost to Sporting but in the league cup they reached the final and won it against Benfica on penalties so uh, Porto won the league cup final as well as the uh, domestic league so they recorded a double in the Champions League knockout rounds, however, they got Manchester City and uh, lost two times at home 2-3 and uh, away from home 1-2. Falcao was uh, the scorer in both games. Falcao apparently had a very good season at Porto. Let's have a look. He scored 12 goals. In the Champions League, he scored 4, so 17 in total. A quite impressive performance from him. He scored another one in the League Cup as well, so... At 33 years of age, he's still a very, very good player, but he has an enormous salary and I'm not sure how Porto are managing with that. Let's look at their finances. They still have a very positive bank balance, so I'm very surprised and uh, kudos to the Porto management. They are performing very well. They have 81 million uh, pounds in the bank and uh, close to 30 million in the transfer budget. So they're doing very, very well, uh, very good for themselves. They, their payroll is very surprisingly low, so I'm not sure if uh, things are going to start to catch up with them next season. We're going to see that. But for now, they are indeed performing very, very, uh, very well. Now let's look at Benfica. In Benfica, Angel Di Maria is now the key player with uh, Captain Jardel and David Luiz as their vice-captain. Let's look at the transfer screen first. And uh, Nelson Semedo immediately sold to Manchester United 27 million pounds, Gonzalo Guedes to Arsenal 37.5, Nemanja Matic to Chelsea, Talishka was sold to Bayern for 30 million pounds as well, Alex Grimaldo to Juventus, Raul Jimenez to Brighton, okay, a lot of transfers there, Adel Tarap was sold to Montpellier, who else, who else, no, not a lot of big transfers, Eduardo Salvio to CSK Moscow, a lot of free transfers there. Lisandro Lopez was sold to Milan, Ruben Diaz to Tottenham for 36.5 million pounds, so it's a lot of big transfers, you can see 170 million pounds in total they, they got in that season. And uh, Andre Carillo was sold to Bordeaux for a bit more than a million pounds, while incoming transfers only two and uh, they were very small, uh, Tyrone Ebuehi from uh, Den Haag, the uh, the Dutch team Den Haag for 1.5 million pounds. I'm not familiar with that player. He's a Nigerian, 23 year old, right fullback. And Antonio Santos on a free from Caldas. So, this is a regen player. I'm not sure how good he is. We don't see that. Unfortunately, I have not, um, in, I have not removed uh, attribute masking. So, this is uh, something that I should have done. Apologies for that. In the finance, we see that their bank balance is now in a terrible state. They have 100 and no, this is 1 million. Oh, okay, so it's it's much better than I expected. No, no, actually this is 14 million indeed. So 14 million in the red. Not good, not a good situation. Although they have a big transfer budget, they have uh, a big depth in the, uh, with the bank. So I'm not sure if Benfica are going to be in a good situation next year. Although they sold a lot of players. In any case, let's see the tactic screen. We see that uh, uh, Jonas is up top playing Zivkovic on the left side with Di Maria on the right. Andre Gomes is still here. All the other players, are, I think, in the middle of the field are uh, not from the 12 stars that we brought back. David Luiz, Lindelof are in the center of the defense. And Ederson is, of course, in goal. Now, looking at their schedule, how did they perform? They lost the Super Cup to Sporting in the opening game of the season, they lost it on penalties. Afterwards, they were performing in the Europa League, where they lost their first game against Olympique Marseille in France, but they uh, defeated Espanyol in the second game. They had a victory in the um, Portuguese Cup. Afterwards, they beat also Austrian Sturm Graz, away from home 1-0, with a goal from Pizzi. They, they won at home as well with a goal from Andrija Zivkovic, but they lost in the uh, Portuguese Cup 4th round to Porto um, at home. They beat Olympique Marseille 2-0, so they had a very good uh, Europa League campaign. I think uh, this is 5 wins and 1 loss only, so this is very impressive. 
They eliminated Santa Clara in the League Cup third phase Group C, which means that uh, they had three wins after also beating Maritimo and uh, Penafiel. Before that, they uh, managed to beat Espanyol away from home as well. And uh, in the League Cup semi-final, they eliminated Sporting on penalties, but lost to Porto on penalties in the final. Okay, then came the Europa League knockout rounds, where first they got Sparta Praga and they drew away from home in, in the Czech Republic, but won at home at uh, Stadio de Luz 1-0 with a goal from Angel Di Maria which qualified them for the second knockout round where they met Napoli. They also eliminated Napoli away from home 1-0 uh, and after that they drew at Stadio de Luz 1-1. In the quarterfinals, however, they met Valencia and uh, lost two times at home 0-1 and uh, in Spain 0-2. So they, have to, uh, they had to only uh, focus locally where they didn't have the best of time. They drew two, two of their final five games, which in the end meant second position. Uh, looking at the uh, end table, even if they won those uh, those games, they would have four points more, which would not be enough to overthrow Porto from the top position. Now let's look at Sporting and how did they perform. Cristiano Ronaldo is still their key player, not a surprise at all. The surprising thing is that uh, he is not transferred, probably because of his wages at this point. So Marvin Zegelar is sold immediately for, to Swansea for uh, less than half a million pounds. Rodrigo Battaglia is sold to Roma. Who else? Let's see. Big transfers there. Gelson Martinez is sold to Real Madrid for forty million pounds. Carlos Mane to Copenhagen. And I think that's it. No, we say we have Islam Slimani is sold to Southampton, so he went to England anyway. Uh, this time for five point seventy-five million pounds, and they have two players on a free: Fernando Rebelo. Fernando Rebelo, a 17-year-old central defender region, and uh, Joao Felipe, another region, a goalkeeper. So, uh, interestingly, they're not spending uh, on, uh, on incoming transfers. Let's see their finances. They're already in the red, uh, so this is uh, how much? This is actually 19 million pounds in debt, and they have uh, 17 million as a transfer budget. Their payroll budget is uh, all right, I think. Let's look at their tactics screen. Cristiano Ronaldo is not here, so apparently this is the last game and uh, it's not really representative of their true uh, playing squad, so I'm not going to focus on that. Let's look at their schedule then. Let's go in the beginning of the season. They won the Super Tassa, which is the Super Cup, uh, the, uh, the kind of the charity shield event in Portugal against uh, Benfica. They won, won that, uh, that game uh, after penalties. Then in the Champions League they started with a draw, with a draw away from home at Leipzig 1-1, followed by uh, a home loss to Benfica 1-2 with a goal from Cristiano Ronaldo, this time at least he scored. And uh, they eliminated Varzim in the uh, Tasa de Portugal third round. Just after that game they drew away in Ukraine to Dinamo Kiev 2-2. Following was a win at home to Dinamo Kiev, uh, then another another eliminated team in the Taste Portugal fourth round, this time Kova de Piedad on penalties. Soon after Red Bull Leipzig drew at home 1-1, so they did not manage to beat uh, Red Bull, but also they didn't lose. In Barcelona they lost 3-0. But um, uh, let's see, so this was the, the final game. Yes, that was the final game in the Champions League. I think they actually qualified considering all of their results. Next were the League Cup fixtures where they uh, won against uh, Vizela, uh, also against Feirense and Vitoria Guimarães, which meant that they qualified for the latter stages. In the uh, Portuguese Cup fifth round, they eliminated Chaves. In the sixth round, they eliminated Porto 3 0, and uh, which went to the League Cup semi-final, which they lost to Benfica on penalties. Oh, so the results that they had did not merit second place. I guess Red Bull uh, deserved the second place because probably they won against other teams and uh, Sporting had to, uh, had to perform in the Europa League, where they had Dortmund in the first, uh, in the first knockout round. They won at home 2-0 but lost away 3-1. Uh, Well, this is very surprising. They lost away 3-1 and 
and uh, oh yeah, they qualified on away goals. Yeah, of course. Apologies, I got mistaken for for a second there that uh, they did not qualify, but because of the, the goal that they scored away from home at uh, Westfalen Stadion, that was enough for them to secure a place in the second knockout round. In the meantime, they uh, defeated uh, Rio Ave in the Tasse de Portugal semi-final first leg. And uh, then they got Nice in the Europa League. They won two nothing at home and drew uh, a goalless draw in France, which which meant that uh, they were qualifying for the Europa League quarterfinal where they got Tottenham and they lost to Tottenham uh, away from home 1-0 and unfortunately they lost at home as well 0-3 but uh, they beat Rio Ave again in the uh, semi-final second leg which meant that they qualified for the final which is against Feirense and it is today so it is not yet played let's uh, let's see how this one goes We have now this final uh, plate and Sporting won against Feirense 2-1 with goals from uh, penalty uh, that was scored by Bas Dost and uh, Daniel Pudense also scored in the 49th minute uh, which meant that uh, the strike by uh, James Igbe Igbekeme was not sufficient for Feirense to take anything out of this game. So Sporting also won a trophy that season as you can tell. Uh, at this point and uh, it was a very interesting turn of events for all three teams I would say. With this I think this is enough for part 2 of uh, the experiment. If you haven't seen part 1 please uh, make sure to do so. Uh, the video is in my channel and also you can find the link in the description below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That way you're going to receive notifications for when I upload new videos. In the meantime you can also check out my social media. Links will be provided in the description below as well. Let me know what do you guys think about this experiment and what would you want to see next. I would love to hear from you in the comments. Once again, thank you for watching. Until the next time, bye!